Windows Longhorn, the operating system that never came to be and you've probably never heard of. In this video, we're going to talk about that mysterious operating system and talk about what happened to it, why it was never released, and even what kind of features it had that we've never seen before in any other operating system since. And it should be pretty interesting. So to fully understand the context of all this, first let's quickly talk about some of the major versions of Windows and when they were released. So we can start off with Windows 95, no surprise that was released in 1995. Then we had Windows NT just one year later in 1996, and then Windows 98 in 1998, and of course, no surprise, Windows 2000 in the year 2000. And then one year later, we had Windows XP in 2001, which we're all very familiar with, I'm sure. And through this timeline so far, there has been a release of Windows every one to two years through Windows XP. But the next version of Windows wouldn't be until November of 2006 with Windows Vista. And then after Vista, there was a pretty regular schedule of a new version every three years. We had Windows 7 in 2009, Windows 8 in 2012, and then Windows 10 in 2015. And Windows 10 did kind of break the cycle and instead of releasing a new major version every three years, they're just doing major updates every half year and it's just gonna be Windows 10 for a while. But the question is, what's the deal with that big five year gap between 2001 and 2006, between Vista and XP? Why was that there? Well, what was supposed to happen was Windows Longhorn and it never did happen. Now to understand why all this happened, first a bit of backstory. So the thing you need to know is that Microsoft wanted to release kind of a minor new operating system in 2003 that would be sort of a stepping stone between XP and what they planned would be Windows 7. Windows 7 was kind of like their main vision. They had a lot of stuff planned for it, but the technology wasn't there yet. So they figured let's just release something in between. And then when we finally can, we'll release Windows 7 with everything we want it to be. And here's kind of a fun fact with the code names of these operating systems systems. So Windows XP was codenamed Whistler and Windows 7 was codenamed Blackcomb. And these are actually two mountains in a ski resort in Canada and they're a reference to that. And Longhorn is actually the name of a bar between these two mountains at the ski resort. So it's kind of a reference to that. Windows Longhorn would be between these two major mountain operating systems that would be released. So at this point, you're probably wondering, well, then what was Windows Longhorn like? And what happened was a lot of these features were developed and eventually did end up in Windows Vista. So for example, the sidebar was first gonna appear in some Windows Longhorn builds and eventually did end up in Vista and a bunch of others that we're gonna talk about. And at some point, Longhorn was actually officially kind of evolved into Windows Vista and renamed to Vista, but that doesn't really mean that we can say simply that Windows Longhorn was Vista. They really weren't the same for a while and they are kind of very different from the final product and what it was originally meant to be. You see, in 2004, Windows Longhorn development was really not going very well. They'd been working on it for years. They really had no coherent vision between the teams, no release date in sight. It really was just taking forever and they realized something had to change. So executives in that year of 2004 eventually decided, you know what, we're just gonna revamp this thing and basically reset development of Longhorn. It kind of scrapped a lot of it and said, we're gonna start from scratch almost and basically use the Windows 2003 code base and kind of sync up all the dev teams. So we're all gonna be on the same page. We're gonna have a very clear map of what we wanna do and that's where we're gonna go from here. Because up until that point, a lot of the development teams were kind of working independently and there would be different developer teams releasing literally completely separate builds of Windows Longhorn that would be compiled. And a lot of these were leaked and that's why we know this. So there might be some builds made by, I don't know, for example, the Internet Explorer team that was completely not including some other builds that may have been made by other teams working on the UI or something like that. So if you ever do look at screenshots for different builds of Longhorn, which we will take a look at some, you may notice that there's a lot of differences between some of the builds that may seem to be pretty close together. And that could be because they were totally built by different teams. 
So some of these builds really did look like Windows XP in many ways with maybe just a very slightly updated design. And there were a lot of features that we saw for the first time in some of these builds. For example, libraries, which are basically virtual folders. You may be familiar with them now. And that did end up in the final version of Vista. These builds also started showing some newly designed versions of Internet Explorer, the media player, the task manager, and lots of other interfaces that I'll show you on the screen, like the control panel, the display panel, a lot of this looked completely different than Windows XP. And it even adds some features that were completely scrapped and were never to be seen again. For example, the ability to completely remove the taskbar and start menu and just put it on the sidebar. So that gadget bar that we saw in Windows Vista, at one point you could move the start button to that sidebar and the start menu would pop out from that instead of the taskbar. Kind of crazy, but it was interesting that they had that at some point. Now, when things really started to really look like Windows Vista was in build 5048. And this is when we first saw the aero design that is pretty much synonymous with Vista and would be kind of adapted into Windows 7. And this build was released in 2005, just a year away from the final release of Vista. So for a long time, this was not even a thing. And just a year after they decided to revamp it, it looked completely different UI wise. So a lot of these builds where you'll see in versions 3000 and 4000 builds look completely different than what we saw starting in 5048. And this is also when they finally adopted Vista as the official public name for the release. And we can basically say that that is when Longhorn officially died and Vista was born as we know it. So if it hadn't been delayed so long and completely remade into Vista, Longhorn most likely would have been kind of like a hybrid between Windows XP and what we know as Vista because they wouldn't have had time to develop actually some of those features that did end up in Vista. And based on that timeline, Windows 7 most likely would have been released a lot sooner than it was, probably closer to when Vista actually was. And like I said, Windows 7, they had a lot of plans for, they wanted to wait until the technology could catch up, till they could develop a lot more for it. But it ends up being that they kind of had to wait anyway because they took so darn darn long on Vista, so when they finally did release Windows 7, it ended up being pretty darn good, actually. So even after all those delays, they still didn't really have everything they wanted to be able to put into Windows 7, so then we got Vista instead. And as we know, Windows Vista was plagued with problems on its launch. A lot of people had bad experiences. It was buggy. It broke a lot of stuff wasn't that good. Though it did actually work out with the launch of Windows 7 and it's still really a favorite for a lot of people today. And also, do you guys remember the Windows 7 launch party? I don't know if you guys ever heard of these. Microsoft literally had like these party packs they would ship to people who wanted to throw Windows 7 launch parties. And they even made a six minute video demonstrating how to throw a Windows 7 party. And let me tell you, this video had it all. It had horrible acting, it had bonus activities that you can do with all the people at the party and celebrate Windows 7. And it really was weird and amazing at the same time, not gonna lie. Plus, if you did throw one of these parties, they actually gave you a free copy of Windows 7 Ultimate, so wasn't a bad deal. So even though we never did get Windows Longhorn, we didn't really miss out because a lot of those features were kind of morphed into Windows Vista. We just got it a little bit later than originally scheduled and a little bit different than what they had originally envisioned. And I guess that's it. Hopefully you guys found this video pretty interesting. Let me know what you think down in the comments. Leave a like if you enjoyed it. And let me know what you think about Windows Longhorn in general. If you want to keep watching, I'll put some other videos right here. You can just click on those. And if you want to subscribe, I make a couple videos every week, so it should be worth it. So thanks again for watching, guys. I'm looking forward to hearing from you. I'll see you next time. Have a good one.